Today we're going to explore an integral which doesn't look so crazy on the outset but will involve lots of really nice tricks in order to find its value. So in particular we've got this integral from 0 to infinity of x times sine x over cosine x times the hyperbolic cosine of x. And that is indeed what is making this like more complicated than it might seem. The fact that in the denominator we've got a combination of cosine and the hyperbolic cosine. Recall that the hyperbolic functions are built out of exponentials. So that's actually going to give us some motivation for how to proceed. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to take this and I'll write it as the integral from 0 to infinity. We'll have x times sine of x. And then in the denominator, I'll keep that cosine of x as is, but write my hyperbolic cosine as e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. That's indeed just the definition of the hyperbolic cosine. Okay, but now I'd rather not have a fraction in the denominator, so I'll take this entire thing and multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2. Okay, so let's do that. So that'll give me a 2 in the numerator, which I'll take out, and then I'll have the integral from 0 to infinity, x sine of x is still there, and now in the denominator I have 2 times cosine of x, plus e to the x plus e to the minus x and then dx. So something like that. Okay, now where should we go from here? Well, the fact that we've written this hyperbolic cosine as an exponential function might give us some motivation to rewrite the sine or the cosine using a complex exponential. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's recall that Euler's formula allows us to do that quite easily. So recall Euler's formula says e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. So that means that the cosine of theta is equal to the real part of e to the i theta. And then the sine of theta is equal to the imaginary part of e to the i theta. Where, of course, by real part and imaginary part, I mean we're just extracting the real function and then the real function sine, which is attached to the imaginary unit. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we want to do for our integral. But the question is, do we do it in the numerator or do we do it in the denominator? And in fact, we'll start by doing it in the numerator. So just to reiterate, I'm going to take this sine of x and I'll replace it with the imaginary part of e to the i theta using this thing that we just recalled over here. Furthermore, I'm going to add a version of 0 to this numerator, and that version of 0 is as follows. The imaginary part of x times e to the minus x. So that's a pretty convoluted way to add 0 to this numerator, but that's what makes this whole thing work. So that's the cool trick that's underlying this. And so again, that, that means the sine part is really inside the imaginary part function, and then this other bit is as well. Okay, so now let's rewrite this whole thing as 2 times the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of what was inside the imaginary part function. So let's see, I can factor an x out, and then we'll have e to the i x, that's from the sine portion, and then plus e to the minus x. Okay, so that's looking good. Now what does our denominator look like? We have 2 times cosine of x plus e to the x plus e to the minus x and then dx. So that's where we're at at the moment. Now our next step is a little bit more innocuous looking, but it still helps us towards our final goal. We'll take this numerator and this denominator and multiply it by e to the minus x. So let's sneak that in there. Okay, so now let's write that out. So what are we left with? We have 2, the imaginary part of the integral from 0 up to infinity. We have x e to the minus x times the quantity e to the i x plus e to the minus x. So that's what's going on in this numerator. And now I'll distribute this e to the minus x through. 
And that's going to leave us with, after moving things around, e to the minus 2x, and then we'll have plus 2e to the minus x times cosine of x plus the number 1, and then we have dx. Okay, now we've got another fairly tricky step, and that is to take this denominator and factor it. And that factoring comes from the fact that cosine is actually equal to one half e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. So let's write a version of that down here. So we have two cosine of theta is equal to e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. And that follows immediately from Euler's formula here. Okay. So let's maybe box that. So that's what we're gonna use here. We'll rewrite cosine using this formula or really two times cosine using this formula. And that motivates the following factorization of what we have down here in the denominator. So this is gonna factor as e to the i x plus e to the minus x times e to the minus i x plus e to the minus x. And you can check that this makes everything work for that factorization. Okay, so that actually gives us quite a bit of simplification. Notice this term in the denominator is exhibited in the numerator, so we're left with something quite a bit simpler in the denominator. And before we write the next step down, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by something just like we did over here. In this case, I'll multiply by e to the i x. So hit the numerator and the denominator with that. So let's see where that leaves us. We have 2 times the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity. What's left in the numerator? We have x e to the minus x e to the i x x e to the minus x e to the i x. Okay, good. Then what's left in the denominator? Well, check it out. The denominator is quite a bit simpler. We have one plus e to the minus x times e to the i x. So that's from distributing this e to the i x through. But look at this. This looks like a multiple of a geometric series. So let's recall that geometric series one over one plus u is equal to the alternating series, which is the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n times u to the n. This is of course like a special case or a specialized case of the geometric series formula, but the alternating version, which is appropriate in this case because we have a plus sign. Okay, so now let's rewrite that. So we'll have two times the imaginary part. Then we have, that's operating on the integral from zero to infinity. We have x e to the minus x e to the i x. And then the sum given by what's going on in the denominator. So that'll be the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n. We have e to the minus nx and then e to the i nx dx. Okay, good. Okay, so for my next step, I'll take this e to the minus x, multiply it through. Notice that gives us e to the minus n plus one times x. And I'll do the same thing here, e to the i x multiplied through, that gives us e to the i times n plus one x. So we can multiply those through and those can build up this denominator, but we might as well not build up the denominator, we might as well just change our starting point. So let's start at one instead of zero and that has the same effect, as long as we're careful to put a plus one right here. Okay, so this is starting to shape up. Now let's see what we have. This is two, and then we have the imaginary part, the integral from zero up to infinity. We're left with x times the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one. And then we'll have e to the minus nx. And then we can expand this as the cosine of nx plus i times the sine of nx. Okay. Cool. So now let's take that imaginary part. 
So we can take the imaginary part of this whole thing, but notice the imaginary part is everything multiplied by this i. So taking the imaginary part will make this cosine part disappear as well as the imaginary unit. And we've got this e to the minus nx times the sine of nx. Now, before we move on to the next board, I wanna do one last small step. And that small step is simply a substitution. So let's take n times x and replace it with t. So that means x is equal to t over n, and that means dx is equal to dt over n. So let's see what that gives us. So here, this x will be replaced with t over n. And then here, this will simply be replaced with t. This will simply be replaced with t. And then this dx, which I haven't written, will be replaced with dt. And then another copy of n, which we might as well put as an n squared out front. Okay, so now let's start the next board with that expression. So this is where we left ourselves. Our goal integral was equal to two times the sum as n goes from one to infinity minus one to the n plus one over n squared. And then we had the integral from zero to infinity of t times e to the minus t times the sine of t. So now let's go about finding the value of this integral. And I'm not gonna do this totally from scratch. I'm gonna do this using the Laplace transform because I'm teaching differential equations right now. Maybe check a link in the description for my second channel where I've got that full course up. And you know, I think it's a nice trick. So let's notice that this is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of t times e to the minus st times the sine of t dt, where we've evaluated this at s equals one. I think that's pretty clear. But now let's take this t times e to the minus st, and notice that this is simply negative the derivative with respect to s of e to the minus st using the chain rule. Okay, so now let's bring that negative derivative outside of the integral. So that's gonna be negative the derivative with respect to s of the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times the sine of t, where after all that, we evaluate it at s equals one. Okay, cool. But now this integral right here is exactly the Laplace transform of the sine function. So let's point that out here. This is equal to the Laplace transform of the sine of t. But let's recall that the Laplace transform of the sine of t is equal to one over s squared plus one. So very simply what we need to do is take the derivative of one over s squared plus one. So what does that give us? Negative the derivative with respect to s of one over s squared plus one. We'll get two s over s squared plus one quantity squared. Notice the two minus signs cancel. Evaluate this at s equals one, and that gives us two over four, which is one half. So that means this thing, that which I've started bracketing in yellow, is simply equal to one half. Okay, but notice that that two in the denominator will cancel out this two in the numerator, finally leaving us with the sum as n goes from one to infinity of minus one to the n plus one over n squared. But now what's that? Well, let's notice that that is equal to the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. So that's all of the positive reciprocals, but notice we want the even reciprocals to be negative. So what we'll do is subtract twice the even reciprocals. So minus two times the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n quantity squared. So all of the reciprocals minus twice the even reciprocals gives us this nice alternating sum. But we can simplify this one quite nicely. Notice this is a four in the denominator. So this is simply equal to one half the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared by some simplification. So we've got a whole sum like that minus a half sum like that will give us the half sum like that. 
But this is the famous basil problem. I think I have like at least three solutions to the basil problem on the channel. You should check one of them out. So we know that this has a value of pi squared over six. Multiplying by a half gives us pi squared over 12. And that is our final answer. So now thanks for sticking around. If you haven't subscribed, maybe hit that subscribe button. Also give it a like and a comment. If you don't know about my second channel, which I mentioned earlier, it's called Math Major and it's where I do all of my course videos. So if you wanna learn a full course of differential equations or complex analysis or upcoming soon, um, introduction to proof writing and abstract algebra, maybe check that out. Also, if you wanna support the channel even more, check out our Patreon. And that's a good place to stop.